Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to Youth Power Hour. What is going on, AOCC family? How are we all doing today? Go ahead and big up yourselves in the comments from wherever you're watching from around the world. Okay, my name is Iman Adeye. I'm so happy to be with you here tonight to bring forth the word of the Lord. Listen, if it's your first time here, you're welcome. Okay, follow us on all our platforms. That's Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, AOCC, NYC. And of course, on YouTube at the Bundy Life Christian Center, you can subscribe and hit the bell as well. Come on. I'm so excited to be with you here today. I hope you guys are having a great week. I hope you're excited because tomorrow is the first day of July, which means we're just about halfway to this year, 2021. I was about to say 2020. Just about halfway to through 2021, all right? It's going to be the 181st day, if I'm not mistaken. And technically, Thursday, crossing to Friday is the real exact half day. But but the 1st of July is marking the second half of this year. So I'm, I'm, I'm so happy about that. I know you're excited about that. I'm so excited to see what God's going to do in your life in this second half of 2021. So get ready because he has so many great things in store for all of us. I want to bring forth the word as we said. We started last week with a new series called Keep That Same Energy, all right? And and, and last week, I think the topic was called uh, A Great Struggle, and I hope many of you were blessed by that message. And and I'm going to bring forth uh, pretty much a second piece to finish off everything that was said in that message last week. I want you to keep your same energy towards God. I want you to keep your same energy toward the things of the Lord. Uh, I want you to keep your same energy towards his precepts, towards his commandments, towards the assignment he gives us. That's what this series is about. And and I hope this word blesses you today because we're going to be here for a good time, not a long time, just so I get your mind focused on how God wants us to be. Okay, so before we get into anything, we, of course, are going to pray. Father God, I thank you, Lord, for who you are. Thank you for your power and your might, Lord. There's none like you. We give you the glory or the honor for what you're doing in our lives, God. I just pray that today your people are blessed by this message. I pray, Father God, that faith is built and our spirits are stirred, O God, into obedience, into faith, into trusting you, into moving as you called us to move. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. And because you believe it, you can go ahead and type amen in the comments as well. So good. Like I said, I'm happy to be with you here today. If you're taking notes, which you always should be, uh, the sermon slash teaching today is titled, Where is he? Where is he? Just exactly where is he? Last week we talked about Job and and his struggles uh, in his situation with God. Uh, And in his situation where, where everything in his life was removed. And it was an emotional roller coaster for Job. And sometimes we do have those moments where things don't look great and we have to ask ourselves, man, where is God? Where is he in my life right now? Where is he in, in the situation I'm going through with the circumstance of how things are going in my life with this up and down roller coaster, with this situation that never seems to be getting better? Where is he? And why is he not here to help me? And why aren't things changing? I think this where is he question comes from when, when a lot of people, um, and it happens to all of us, are struggling and we just, we just don't quite see his plan. And now we're unmotivated. We're unwilling to do anything. We're, we're just lost. We're stuck. And, and it's a struggle. Where exactly is God and what is his plan? How is he trying to help me? Where is he? And this, this perspective, that perspective, this question, this entire sermon series is, is, a, is a challenge to our spiritual maturity. It's, 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 a, it's a look in the face to, to show, hey, listen, how spiritually mature are we? In fact, what does that exactly mean? How does that exactly look? In fact, where is our level of spiritual maturity? I'm a firm believer that anyone who has been uh, attending ALCC for any small or long period of time or watching uh, this platform, um, you know, Faith Over Fear, heck, Forward Shift, Winning Power Hour, Friday Power Night, if you've been uh, a part of this ministry, you understand you, you have the base level of spiritual maturity down pat, which is the, the knowledge that, hey, listen, just because you're a believer, just because you gave your life to Christ, doesn't mean that you will never face a problem again. 
Doesn't mean that every single day will be guns and roses, which is the term, and every single day would just be just you just on top of the world and happy. No, there's the base level of spiritual maturity is knowing that, hey, I'm going to go through things, and that is why I have God in the first place. That is why I need God in the first place. In fact, take this note down. Spiritual maturity is understanding God is in control. Spiritual maturity is understanding that God is in control. There's a level to spiritual maturity. When you get and understand that he's always in control, that he is sovereign regardless how the situation looks. He, he is sovereign no matter how long you've been down the rut, no matter how hard things have been, no matter what has happened to you or what you're going through, there's a level of spiritual maturity that understands that God is sovereign and He is in control. That's picking up from pretty much where we were last week with Job. That's, that's one of the, the understandings Job had to go through, a deeper revelation of God's sovereignty, a deeper understanding of, of God being in full control during the good times and during the bad times. In fact, as I'm even talking now, remember the message that, that we preached uh, on this platform maybe around this time last year, maybe in like September, November, where we talked about God being in trouble, God being right there while you're in trouble in the midst of all that. That's exactly where he is. And, and, and as we talked about Job, let's talk about Joseph today. Joseph had a very interesting story. I can't read everything I want to read about Joseph because that's about five to six chapters. All right. But, but when you look at his entire story, you see something very powerful about him. Job grew up, I mean, Joseph grew up the 12th out of 13 kids, out of the 13 boys for Jacob, actually. And, and him being the child of Jacob's wife, Rachel, and, and being favored with his coat of many colors, um, it put him in a position where it was 11 versus 1, where it was Joseph against his brothers, where they obviously uh, built some type of animosity towards him because of heck, the dreams he had and, and, and all those experiences. And then they threw him into the pit. And we know his story from the pit. He gets sold into slavery, into the palace, and then into prison. But, but, but what we realize, what I, I realized about Joseph reading his story a couple days ago is not once, not once from any pit experience or prison experience uh, in Joseph's life in the Bible do we see that he complained. Not once do we see that he complained. Take this point down. Spiritual maturity, the, the spiritual mature don't complain. The spiritual mature don't complain. Now listen, I'm not saying you aren't spiritually mature if you do complain ever. No. I'm saying there's a level to spiritual maturity where, where you just don't complain about what you're going through. Yes, you, you, you can talk about it. Yes, uh, of course, express fully how you're feeling emotionally in the presence of God. We saw that last week. But there's a level to, to those who are spiritually mature and know how, who God is and how God works where we just where you shouldn't just, and you probably just don't complain in certain situations, where, where it's, it's, it's kind of, let me say, you're, you're above uh, being overwhelmed in a certain situation, in a certain, uh, in a certain uh, uh, circumstance. You're, you're cool, you're calm and collected, because all your faith is in the Lord. The spiritual mature don't complain. Not once did we see Joseph complain. I mean, we're talking, like I said, it was 11 against 1. He spent a night in a cold pit. He's, he was locked up in jail for doing a crime that he did not commit. Locked up for no reason. And not once did we see him shed a tear or complain at all. In fact, we, we, we don't even hear much from Joseph. When you read uh, the chapters of Joseph, uh, the story of Joseph in Genesis, we don't even see many words come out of Joseph's mouth. Not, not, not many words that, that, that come out of his mouth, but we do see one thing about Joseph. In his entire story, we realize this, that Joseph knew God, and from his knowledge of God, he had nothing to complain about. We knew that Joseph knew God, and from his knowledge of who God is, he had nothing to complain about. And I think that's very interesting and rich about jo uh, Joseph's story. Let's look at Genesis chapter 39, verse 8 to 9. It says this. It says, but Joseph refused. All right, look, he told her. Now, let me give you some backstory. This is a story. This is, we're jumping right into Joseph and Potiphar's wife. 
All right, Potiphar, Potiphar's wife trying to seduce, seduce Joseph at the main days. And th this, is, this is what happens. But Joseph refused. Look, he told him, my master trusts me with everything in his entire household. No one here has more authority than I do. He has held back nothing from me except you because you are his wife. But how can I do such a wicked thing? It would be such a great sin against God. I'm going to read this so you can actually understand again what he is saying. Joseph refused. He said, look, my master trusts me with everything in his entire household. No one here has more authority than I do. He has held back nothing from me except you because you're his wife. How could I do such a wicked thing? It would be a great sin against God. I thought this is so crazy when I read this the other day. Joseph here is saying this. He said, hey, listen, me and your husband are friends, all right? I'm a slave, but I'm not a slave slave, all right? I have so much power and authority in this house, okay? I, I can do what I want. I can, say what, I can say what I want to say. I can go where I want to go anytime. I can eat what I want to eat. I can make any decision in this household completely. The only thing my master has held away from me is you because you're his wife. And I'm not going to touch you, not because it's a wicked thing against him, because this would be a great sin towards God. And when, 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 I, when I read that, it made me understand that, that Joseph's relationship to God was deeper than his relationship to Potiphar. Now, of course, that's a simple, of course, it should be like that. But his response was saying, hey, listen, I'm so close to your husband. I, I, I'm so highly esteemed and seen in this house. And none of that even matters. That's not even why I won't do it. I'm not going to do it because I know God. And this is in complete opposite of what God would want me to do. See, Joseph feared the Lord. And take this point down. Those who fear the Lord know the Lord. Those who fear the Lord know the Lord. Joseph knew Potiphar to, to a great extent, but, but his knowledge of God was deeper than, than his knowledge and his relationship with Potiphar. And because he had that knowledge, that fear of the Lord, he knew it was better for him not to do that. What we know about Joseph is that he feared God. And now, why is that big to knowing exactly where God is? Because there, there are two very strong aspects when it comes to the fear of the Lord. There, there's two very strong, keep your energy, keep that same energy type aspects when it comes to the fear of the Lord. There's the aspect of sin and the knowledge of God. There's the aspect of sin and the knowledge of God. Now, of course, and when it comes to the fear of the Lord, like we see in the same story, all right, when it comes to sin, you want to stay away from sin. Keep that same energy towards sin, all right? Where it's no means no, is yes means yes. I think that's Matthew 5, 37. Where, hey, I said yes to God, so I'm saying no to this, and I'm keeping my same energy towards that. I said yes to God, and that's a no to this sin. That's a no to a plethora list of different sins. Most definitely keep your energy to that, all right? But the other half of the fear of the Lord is about relational proximity to God. It's about being close to God. It's about having a relationship with the Lord. When you fear the Lord, you know the Lord on a deeper level. All right? Having an increase in the fear of the Lord increases your uh, knowledge of God. Man, and, and, and you see that those who have a deep relationship with God are those who fear the Lord as mentioned in the Bible. We see it here with Joseph, of course. Uh, we see it with, with Moses, as Moses feared the Lord, uh, uh, against, uh, very different from how the Israelites were scared of God. And we see how God talks about Moses. Even Abraham, who feared the Lord, and how God talks about Abraham. And of course, we saw it last week with Job, and how God bragged about Job. And this is all because these four men, they feared God, and their fear of God brought deeper knowledge of who God is. So when you, when you have a deep level of the fear of the Lord, you actually deeply know who God is. You get a deeper revelation of who He is, how He operates, uh, where He's at, and how He works. I think that's so big because Joseph was put in so many different positions where he had to just know. He had to just know God was there for him. Take this note down. The spiritual mature don't feel, they know. 
The spiritual mature don't feel they know. They do not feel, they just know. All right, that's straight out of the Psalms uh, 46, verse 10, where it says, Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. Not feel that I am God. Just know. Just, just have the knowledge, have the understanding that I am God. Yes, you may not feel me in this situation. You may not, you, you may have, it may feel like I've been far away from you, but be still and know that I am God. And I'm pretty sure Joseph didn't feel God in the pit, but he knew he was there. I'm pretty sure Joseph, when, 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 when he was in that pit and it was, it was all cold, it was frozen that one night, his, his brothers threw him in there, he did not feel God's presence around him. He did not feel like God was there with him, protecting him. He did not feel like God was there and he got into the situation, but he knew God. And him just knowing God was enough to keep him stable. Him just knowing God was enough to keep him from complaining. Him just knowing God was all he needed. In fact, that's the theme of Genesis chapter 39. When you read Genesis chapter 39, I believe it's mentioned, I think, about four or five times that the Lord was even with Joseph. It was mentioned three or four, maybe even maybe four times that the Lord was with Joseph. That's the theme of Genesis chapter 39. You may not feel that God is there with you, but you just know that he is there with you. Look at these scriptures, Genesis chapter 39, verse 19 to 23, it says this. Potiphar was furious when he heard his wife's story about how Joseph had treated her. So he took Joseph and threw him into the prison where the king's prisoners were held, and there he remained. But the Lord was with Joseph in the prison and showed him his faithful love. And the Lord made Joseph a favorite with the prison warden. Long before the warden put Joseph in, ch in charge of all the other prisoners and over everything uh, that happened in the prison. The warden had no more worries because Joseph took care of everything. The Lord was with him and caused everything to succeed. Do you see that? Even as Joseph was in the prison, the Lord was with him. Even as you may be in your own prison, the Lord is with you. So the question of man, where is he? Like, how come God has not showed up? How come I'm still in this prison? You know, where, where, where is God in my life? Where is he in my situation? No, God is always there with you. Where is he? He is right there with you. Just as he was right there with Joseph. That's why you should keep that same energy. Just because you're in the pit, just because you're in the rut, just because you're in the situation, just because you feel like you're in some type of prison, does not mean you should change your energy towards God. Does not mean you should change your energy towards what you have to do in the situation. Does not mean you should change your energy towards your purpose, towards your family, towards the goal at hand. No, in fact, you should keep that same energy because you don't need to feel that God is there with you. You just have to know that the same God that was with Joseph is the same God that is with you now in your own trial and tribulation. Where is he? He's right there with you. Where is he? He is right there preserving you and protecting you. And because he is there with you, there is grace and there's favor there to sustain you in your prison experience and to get you out. The whole entire time Joseph was in prison, we just read it in those verses, that he even had favor from the warden. That the warden had no worries because Joseph was there. And because Joseph was there, God was there. And because you're there, God's there. I don't know who needs to hear that, but because you're there, because you're in that family, because you're at that job, all right, because you're the possibly one believer, maybe because uh, you're, you're this one person who, 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 think, who thinks your struggle is just eternal, is this, this, this is how it's going to be? Uh, how it's going to be? No. Because you're there, God's there. And because God's there, everything's going to be okay. And because God's there and God's there with you, he's granted you favor. And not only he's given you favor and grace, but he's made a way out of any situation for you. Where is he? Man, he's right there with you. And that's why you have to keep your energy. Keep that same energy of faith. 
Keep that same energy of trust and keep that same energy of the fear of the Lord. And you know what's crazy? All three of those, are they, they work hand in hand, but all three of those are different. Okay, the, 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 the fear of the Lord is, helps with your awareness of God, which answers the question of where God is. Because when you have a deeper understanding of the fear of the Lord, it is a deeper understanding of awareness with God. That's a big prayer. To, to, to be aware of God's presence, to be aware of his plans, to be aware of his leadings. All right, I believe it's, um, it's Proverbs 3, verse 6, that says, In all your ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your path. In all your ways, make yourself aware of where he is. Make yourself aware of what he's doing. Make yourself aware of his presence. God is omnipresent. So even the question of, of, of where is he or God's not, not there for me or I don't feel God and so he must not be around, it actually doesn't make any sense because he's omnipresent. So, so, so what one needs is a deeper awareness of God, a deeper understanding of what he's doing in this moment in my life. And that's where the fear of the Lord comes in. And trust and faith are two things that are different. There will be seasons where you're going to have to uh, uh, operate off your trust that you have with God, and there are seasons where you're going to have to operate based off the faith that you have with God. And if faith is what you have when you don't know anything, trust is what you have when you do know something. All right? there, there, there are levels, there are moments where we just have to trust God because of everything He's already done for you because of what you know about him, because of different things, of different situations he's gone the out of, different testimonies where he's healed you, where he's provided for you, where he's sustained for you, to sustain you then, you, then that helps you trust God. But there are moments where, where, where you, you're going to need to see God in a different light, where you need a, a different revelation of the Lord, like we saw last week, and you have to step out in faith. And you have to step out in faith once again, like you never knew God before, and dig deep into prayer, and dig deep into fasting, and dig deep into worship, and dig deep into just letting God take full control, and you stepping out on faith, stepping out on nothing, and believing, and believing that God will see you through. Believing is faith, knowing is trust, and the fear of the Lord will sustain you and be foundational for both. But there are moments where you're going to have to put full faith in God because you just probably feel like God is far from you in this situation. And the spiritual mature, we do not feel. We just know. We do not feel. We just know. Take this point down. Your temporary situation shouldn't stop your heavenly assignment. Your temporary situation shouldn't stop your heavenly assignment. Let me tell you this, this aspect of keeping your same energy. Because what we see from Joseph's story is that Joseph never let his problem stop him from fulfilling purpose, stop him from moving in power, stop him from moving in authority, stop him from moving in his purpose. Okay, though he was in the prison, he still interpreted dreams. Though he was in the prison, he still used his gifts. Though he was in the prison, all right, he still allowed God to use him as a vessel. Now, why is that so important? Because there are times where a lot of us, we get in, the, in a situation where heck, it's, just, it's not our day, our month, our week, or our, our year, and, and we're just stuck not helping anybody. And we're stuck not fulfilling our purpose. And we're stuck in the point where it's like, you know what, God, I can't do what you want me to do because you're not doing anything for me because I'm still stuck in the same prison day after day, week after week, month after month, year after year. What is the point of me walking in obedience? What is the point of me serving you? And, and, and Joseph did not have that mentality. In fact, Joseph's breakthrough came because he was still moving in purpose and authority and power while he was in prison. All right, Joseph in prison interpreted two dreams. I believe it's the, the baker and the butler. And because he interpreted those two dreams, one of them was able to bring him out to, to help assist him years later with Pharaoh. And why is that so important? Because there, there, there are people, and those people are us, all right, who, who, who find ourselves sometimes in, in situations, in prisons, find ourselves in, in, in circumstances, in trials and tribulations that are just tough, where we can't see God, where things aren't going well for us, and God still wants to use us 
to be the key that unlocks other people out of their own prison. What are you going to do when God wants to use you to break someone else out, to free somebody else from the bondage that they've been under while you are still locked up yourself? The only way you can even do that is keeping the same energy towards yourself, towards purpose, and towards God. That's what we see in Joseph's life. In fact, even as I say that now, that's the same thing that Abraham had to do. Abraham had to pray, pray for Abimelech's wives to, to, to uh, not to be barren, essentially, anymore. And while the whole time, Sarah, Sarah has not even given birth to a child. Sarah's like 80 or 90-something years old. They're expecting kids themselves. And God is like, no, listen, I want you to pray for him and his family and all the females in, in his household for them to, to give birth, for their wombs to open up. And sometimes we have to pray, sometimes we have to be the key, sometimes we have to be the person to fill the void in other people's lives when there's still a void there for ourselves. How can you keep that same energy? It's necessary. You need to have that faith, you need to have that trust, and you need to have that fear of the Lord. It is very, very important. All right, and just understand that even as you're in that situation, God is with you. God is with you. That revelation alone should help you keep that same energy towards him. Keep that same energy in that trial, in that struggle, in that situation. And even bigger than that, what we see in the Old Testament a lot of times, obviously that, that God is with individuals. Yes, and that's beautiful, that's great. But because of what Jesus Christ did on the cross, it gets so much better for us. Because of what Jesus Christ did on the cross, God is not just only with us, but God is inside of us. That is a note for you right there. He lives in you. He lives in you in you. Where is he? He is right there inside of you. He is right there inside of you. First John chapter 4 verse 12 to 13 says it like this. It says, no one has ever seen God, but if we love each other, God lives in us, and his love is brought to full expression in us. And God has given us his spirit as proof that we live in him and he in us. We understand that, that, that when we give our lives to Christ, the Holy Spirit is deposited inside of us. So, so back to the question of where is he? Is that even a question? Where is he? Where are you? I think that's a, a better question. Where are you? Where's your head right now in, in, in the trial you're in? Where's your faith level at? Where is your trust level at? Because where is God? God is right there inside of you. God is right there for you, fighting for you. Uh, I believe the, uh, the word says, out, out of their belly will rivers of living water flow. The Holy Spirit is the rivers of living water that is flowing through each and every single one of us as we are believers in Christ. So answer that question. Are you believing the Lord? Are you, have, have you given your life to Christ and believe that Christ has died uh, and has been your Lord and Savior? Is that, if that's the case, God is everywhere you go. There is not a place you go that God is not there. Where is he? Where are you? Because he is right there with you. And that's, that's big because your mentality should change. I don't want anyone praying thinking God is far away from them. We don't pray to connect with God. We pray from our connection with God. All right? And, 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 and rightfully so, a lot, you know, a lot of times when we pray, we look up, we, 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 we extend hands up and probably bow down, which is great, which is right, which is true. But the understanding that the Spirit lives inside of you, don't, don't let the physical posture confuse that God is right here with you, that God is living inside of you, that the Holy Spirit is inside of you, and He is your helper. Uh, our senior pastors and other leaders uh, in, in our church have done a phenomenal job this past month. Well, this month, because we're still in June. This month, talking about the Holy Spirit being our great advantage uh, and, and walking with the Holy Spirit. And the understanding that God 
lives inside of us. And all the help we need, all the teaching we need, all the encouragement, all, all the spirit building, all the faith building, all the fear of the Lord building, all the trust building, everything has been deposited inside of us. All authority given unto the Lord, uh, all authority given unto us, all, all wisdom, all knowledge, all understanding is in the Holy Spirit. All boldness needed, all power needed, all authority needed dwells and lives inside of you. Where is he? Where are you is the bigger question. Where are you mentally? That's, in, that's exactly what God asked uh, uh, Adam. Adam sinned and God, God said, hey, where are you? And, and, and that, that's a mental check to see where's your mind at. So, so, so let me ask you this. Where are you? In the situation that you're in right now, in the biggest struggle that you're facing, in your biggest trial and tribulation, where you feel like you can't see God, where you just don't feel like you can even feel God, where are you? In knowing that He is God, in knowing that He lives inside of you, in knowing that because you are there, He is with you and He has made a way out for you. There's been favor, there's been grace at least for you to not even just be sustained and there to be provision wherever you're at, but God to provide a way to get, provide a way for you to get out of any prison, any pit, any situation experience that you may be having right now. So what's the Holy Spirit telling you today? For some of us, we need to get a deeper, deeper fear of the Lord and grow in our spiritual maturity. And, and understand that God is so sovereign no matter what we are going through. And understand that God is fighting our battles for us. That we need to have more faith, more trust in God. And that the fear of the Lord is not just working for us when it comes to sin, but is in the knowledge of Him. It's in the knowledge of who He is. And as we grow in the reverential fear of Him and grow in our awareness of Him, we can grow in knowing and believing that God is with us at all times. And maybe you, you, you don't have uh, the Holy Spirit living inside of you today because you've never given your life to Christ. We want to take this moment for, for you to pray the salvation prayer. Maybe you feel like you have to rededicate your life to Christ. Go ahead and pray this prayer and repeat after me. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for sending your son Jesus to die for me. I am a sinner. Wash me with your blood and make me new. And fill me with your precious spirit from this day on and forevermore. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Hey, if you pray that prayer, go ahead and text SAVE, that's S-A-V-E-D, to 718-312-2253. I'll say it again. That's SAVE, that's S-A-V-E-D to 718-312-2253. Everyone, let's just stretch our hands and pray to the Lord right now. Father, I thank you, Lord, for, for the word that you brought for tonight, God. We thank you, God, because you are with us. We thank you, God, because you are living inside of us. And no matter what prison experience we may be experiencing, no matter what situation we may be going through, God, we know that the answer to where are you is quite simple because you are with us. God, I pray, Lord, that we grow in our spiritual maturity in the name of Jesus. And I pray that we grow in our faith in you, in our trust in you, God. Lord, I just pray that you baptize afresh with the fresh unction of, of, of the fear of the Lord in the name of Jesus. That you increase our awareness of your voice. You increase our awareness of your spirit. You increase our awareness of your leading in the name of Jesus Christ. That as we walk into the second half of this year, Father, no matter what comes our way, we would know that you are with us in Jesus' name. We would not fall, God. God, we would not suffer any prison experience, O oh God, and not lament, O oh Lord. God, I pray that we will still fulfill purpose, though things may not be looking great for us, O oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ. God, I pray, Lord, that you get all the glory for what happens in our life. And God, I just pray in the name of Jesus that we learn to keep that same energy towards you. No matter what we may be going through and how the situation looks, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Come on, somebody. 
Give God a shout of praise. Have you been blessed by today's message? Go ahead and like, comment, subscribe. Go ahead and share this link so others can be blessed as well. I want to see you in church on Sunday. We have our two services. Okay, that's our 8 a.m. service and our 1015. Those who came last week to the summer uh, to the summer bash last Friday, it was awesome. We had an awesome time. Those of you who did not go, that's on you and on you alone. Okay, you've seen the message in the group chat. We reached out to some of y'all. Some of y'all said have not returned back to church. So I don't know what you're doing. Uh, figure it out. All right, but we love you anyway. And remember for all who is watching, it is your story for his glory. Mm -hmm.